Your Excellency John Kerry, Chair of Energy Forum, President and CEO of Equino, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great privilege and honor for me to be invited and deliver key speech at the official opening of the 2024 Oslo Energy Forum. This being my first time to address this gathering, which I consider important and relevant, let me acknowledge and applaud all those who put this meeting together. Ladies and gentlemen, as we navigate through the currents of rapid economic growth, technological advancements, and shifting demographics, this year's theme is befitting. It's befitting to the topic that tackle the question of creating action, transformation, change. I think our conversation should kickstart with a question. And the question is, what kind of transformation do we need? It is my understanding that the broad consensus on this central question is that we need transformation that will support low emission climate resilient development. I wish to posit the attainment, uh, that attainment of this would require bold and collaborative solutions, both in public and private sector. At present, Africa contributes less than 5% of the global climate pollution. This notwithstanding, Africa suffers dearly from the effects of climate change. In my own country, Tanzania, despite our minimal contribution to global climate change, yet the, next, uh, the net economic cost of addressing climate change is estimated to be two to 3% of our DGP, uh, GDP per year. And thus, climate change is a matter of grave concern to us, the developing economies. During COP27, uh, 28, sorry, during COP28, the international community resolved, among others, to transition away or to transit away from fossil fuels in the existing energy systems with a view of achieving net zero emissions by 2050. The question here is how this transition can be a success without additional adverse effects on developing countries. We know, for instance, that greater or greener energy technology is not only more expensive, but also not really readily available in the most developing countries. So for, <clears throat> so for practical reasons, energy transition in developing countries should be passed and properly coordinated. That being said, however, we might not have technology for greener energy, but Africa has the raw materials needed for this purpose. For instance, 40% of global reserves of cobalt, manganese, and platinum are found in Africa. So there is a role that Africa can play in the transition towards greener energy. In creating actions for transformation change towards a low emission development path, several things are inevitable. First and foremost, with fossil fuels being the largest source of carbon dioxide emission, our conversation must begin with underscoring the need to phase out fossil fuels. Secondly, Africa has a huge potential to contribute to a green energy transition and is a respiratory of minerals, minerals critical to the energy transition, including cobalt, copper, chromium, iron ore, platinum, or platinum group metals 
lithium and rare earth metals. These resources are essential for manufacturing electric vehicle components and renewable energy technologies. But all of this may not be useful if we lack the technology to develop them, technology which is available in the developed world. We thus need to complement each other. But the question here is how? Here I wish to make the case that the partnership for green energy should be mutual beneficial. <coughs> Africa needs a smarter partnership towards a green energy transition. What would this comprise of? This would entail collaboration to establish low carbon intensive manufacturing facilities within Africa, and thus veering away from the current model of raw minerals export to energy equipment, to energy equipment import. Both the economic and environmental case can be made for processing these minerals on site in Africa. What I'm now making is the political case. Doing this would help ensure that Africa's role in the green energy transition guarantees that its vast potential is used sustainably with a poverty eradication at the fore. Thirdly, and connected to the preceding contention, Africa needs reliable and affordable greener energy technology. As I indicated earlier, Africa is currently paying dearly due to effects of climate change. Therefore, to sustainably cut them down, um, alternative technology should be available and affordable. And in this regard, we, the developed world, need to support, or the developed world need to support us with affordable greener energy technology. We can also collaborate on diversification of Africa's energy mix. As I said, it may not be feasible to expect Africa to transit straight to the greener energy. But leading there, Africa need to have a mix of energies. In Tanzania, partnerships can be forged to promote LNG, solar, wind and geothermal, among others. Relatedly, my fourth point is that the developed world should support existing ambitious climate action solutions in Africa. For example, Tanzania is championing, as uh, the Prime Minister said, um, we are championing the African Women Clean Cooking Support Program. And this program aims at changing narratives from traditional biomass, firewood and charcoal to more cleaner energy. We therefore welcome support to this program and other climate action programs. I'm honored that Tanzania will co-chair the International Summit on Clean Cooking in Africa, co-organized by Norway and the International Energy Agency in Paris, May this year. The AWCCSP pro, uh, program will also complement to our national strategy for clean cooking energy, aiming at ensuring that 80% of Tanzanian women use clean cooking energy by 2033. Dear participants and distinguished delegates, our commitment to the United uh, Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the formulation of our national determined contribution hold significant weight. However, the question arises, where is the support for our energy sector? While our plea echoes through each conference to the parties' meetings, tangible progress remains elusive. International support and concerted collaboration are the cornerstone of our impact. In conclusion, and in a nutshell, the goal for transformational change is set. We seek a low emission climate resilient development pathway. 
The necessary action for this will require joint efforts, and the developed countries should be part of these collaborative solutions. Given the resources Africa has, the continent is a critical part of the solution. As such, I wish to stress on the need to forge smart partnerships that will avail affordable green energy uh, technologies, bridge the existing investment gap in processing critical minerals in Africa, and diversify Africa's green mix. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, let me retreat my call for complementing one another towards fostering a more inclusive, equitable, sustainable development path through the renewables. 1.5 is very possible. Let act and stop the rhetoric. I thank you all for your kind attention. Many thanks.